So I'm Brendan Farrell, I'm Arda Eco Gardens here in Arda and my passion is here in Arda in the gardens. Um, I work as a landscape gardener, that's to pay the bills and I love that too but my real real joy is growing plants and, and creating this garden that I have here. Um, we've been working on the garden for about 16 years but I've been growing vegetables and growing plants for over 40 and uh, so I love making use of what we have and making full use of the things that we really don't pay much attention to but can be used and particularly in a situation that we're in at the moment anything that we can use and save us going off to the shop is to be recommended. So this old cardboard box here um, so we're sponsored by, sorry, I meant to say, uh, Longford Heritage Office are sponsoring and uh, funding this video. And uh, so it's my privilege to be working with Longford Heritage Office on it. This cardboard box here, um, good and strong, good and firm, and that would be an ideal material to make a little mini garden. Cardboard is a fantastic product. It's something that can be recycled. Um, it's ideal in the garden. I always often use cardboard. Um, maybe use it as a mulch to control weeds. Just break up the box and spread it out. Put some stones on top of it. And eventually it'll rain, it'll get wet. It'll soften. And then underneath it, all kinds of activity will be taking place. Um, beetles, earthworms, other insects they will uh, work on it. I remember one time, one particular day I was here, it was very quiet, there was nothing going on, and I could hear, and I couldn't figure out this sound. And so I listened carefully. And eventually I found a wasp regurgitating the cardboard. They were making their nest. And cardboard is the, the building material, carbon, ideal for the, for the wasp. So they were using the carbon to make their nests. So it's a fantastic thing, a natural product. But I'm gonna make this into a little mini garden here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of compost, natural organic compost into this. I also use some soil, garden soil, and as I'm going to go through the garden soil, there's some weeds in there. I can see the roots of a particular weed called scotch, which we don't want in it. So you just have to go through this carefully because you don't want to have, you don't want to introduce weeds into it. No more than in the garden itself. The same thing, the little mini garden. You can just use, if you only have compost from your own garden or some soil from the garden, that's okay. Waste material, if you have kitchen waste compost, that's ideal. Old eggshells, banana skins, apple cores, onion skins, all that when it breaks down makes fabulous compost. So there's lots of lovely soil in that now there. I'm going to put a little bit of multi-purpose compost into it too. A little bit of that. A little bit more organic compost. This organic compost is the old mushroom compost. Mushroom growers use this. So it would have been um, horse manure, all kinds of good stuff in it, which is perfect for growing vegetables. You can see that the box is quite sturdy. Now, when it gets wet, the carbon will begin to soften. So, I think I'll tie a bit of bale or twine or something around it when I have it finished, so that it will um, keep in position. That's all I need, just to grow my crop. So this is my garden. This is my little mini garden here now. And it's amazing what you get from this space. Quite a lot. And a lot of uh, 
plants, a lot of food from it, but also a lot of interest and a lot of uh, uh, anticipation and observation and learning. You can learn an awful lot from a small area. And I would always recommend when you're growing, especially if you're starting off, to start small. Just do a small section first. If you did this size in initially, then you could expand it to the size of the table. Second, then you could have two tables and so on. But you learn bit by bit as you go along. So now, we're ready. So what are we going to sow in this box? This, uh, this garden here. So I have a number of different crops I'd like to sow. A little bit of parsley. It's perfect. Small amount of parsley. Some salad mix, spring salad mix. Some spring onions. Some radish. Maybe some beetroot. And these onions here. These are onion shallots. And onion shallots are something similar. Well, you can use them in a number of ways. You can grow them, and when the greens comes up, you can use them as a salad onion. But you can allow them to grow for the full season, right through until autumn. And then you can lift each one of those up. And when you lift it up, instead of one being there, you might have five or seven. Now imagine that. Imagine if you put one euro into the bank today, and in the autumn, you go back in and ask for seven. We expect seven euros. That's the investment, same, same proportion. Same principle, one and a seven. So the earth is the most bountiful bank of all. It's, it's everything, all our riches and all, everything comes from the earth. So anyway, here's our onions. So I'm gonna make a little plot here now and I'm gonna mark them out. Our little areas here. Our little pops. Line them up, little lines. Little Area. So it's organized, and you have it nicely organized. So I'm going to plant the onions at one end. So I'm going to put in those onions here. I'm going to pull a little bit off the top here. The birds actually at the moment are building nests, and these little things appeal to them because they think well, if I pull, that'd be ideal for the lining of a nest. So just pull off the little bits at the end there, like that. You're not going to damage the onions a lot. So I'll just put them there for the moment. Here we have. Yeah. This is why I didn't plant them straight away. I wanted to make them all, give, give them room for them all. So what I might do is I'll put them all in. And we can use the middle ones, the little ones when they come on. We can use them as little greens first. And if we want to then we can thin them out as they grow. So that's our little shimmer. So we'll just push them down into the earth now. Okay. Now. Now we have our onion shalash. I'm going to label them this time. I'm going to label each one. What to do is put the date on it. And today is the 8th, isn't it? Is it the 8th? Yeah, so the eight of the fourth, twenty. And that can go there. So now the next one then, the next thing we'll grow. I think the next thing I'll do is a little bit of parsley. In all true, true all, for a good part of twenty twenty one. So a little bunch of um, parsley here now. Okay, again we'll put the label on, parsley, so this parsley is called green pearl, so we'll put that on as well, and this, we don't really need, well we will, we'll put the date on, yeah, but we know that they're all sown the one time, and with parsley a very little bit of covering, you don't need to cover the seeds very much, just a little covering is sufficient. 
again you just perm them in there then like that and we have the seeds are in now another little one here is radish and i have these seeds from last year because radish you don't need very much in the, in the line of radish so i had a package here from last year and because there, you keep them if you keep them in a a dry cool place um, they keep for quite a while i usually put mine into a tupperware container a whole lot of them and uh, they're dry in there and then leave it in the shed out of the way so mice can't get in at them dampness can't get in at them and they keep pretty well so a little bunch of radish here coming on and yeah um, i think one one row is probably enough i think it is you can throw another row again you can do another box like for next in two weeks time you could do another another box so you can have coming on in succession and as the box is finished the great thing about it is nothing goes to waste in the garden so all the compost when the plants and the crops have grown the compost is still it's not gone to waste don't throw that away that will also be reused again that can go back into the soil and help to condition the soil because there's a good bit of organic matter in that compost an organic matter feeds the soil there's an old the native american had an old saying you feed the soil not the plants so if the soil is prepared well and there's plenty of organic matter in the soil then you don't need to be feeding the plants as they grow and there again covered up now i'm going to do a little bit of salad a bit of salad spring salad mix now this mix here contains lettuce rockers mibuna which is an oriental salad leaf and cotton cum so it's a kind of a cotton cum mix so as these grow the, the fresh leaves comes on them you just cut them off with a scissors with a little sharp knife and harvest them and use them and then the plant will produce more so it'll keep producing for quite a while probably for about two months i would say you get a crop from it so i'm going to put two rows of these in here. Again, the seeds goes into the palm of your hand remember that the palm of your hand because there are no holes in the palm of your hand hopefully not anyway and the seeds are safe in there you can have your hand nicely um, rounded so that you hold the seeds in there use your thumb and forefinger then to, as to get a pinch of seeds and you let them out you can feel the seeds working your way through your fingers and uh, you can be able to do a nice even so you don't want a big lump in one place and none in another nice even distribution of the seeds and now we have two lovely little rows of those sorted there and then they go back into the package as well and again then we will uh, so we'll just put the thing on that there spring Salad. salad mix okay they'll do there we put at the end of the two rows because the two rows are the same so we put it the, we don't need to put one on each row and then we're left with the final little row let's end here and i'm going to do some scallions spring onions so we'll have shallots at one end and we will have white lisbon scallions at the other you can throw them fairly close together because onions um they, they're happy enough to grow together they're not very big and they will you get a good lot out of it you don't want just to have two or three onions in that you want to have a good couple of bunches a surprising amount of bunches that you have in that now. I'll just count them roughly now in a minute. Five, 
It could be about 50 in that, so that would produce probably about 8 bunches of onions, scallions, in that alone. So the amount of what you might call um, produce in this, you know, it's quite possible 70 or 80 euros worth of food could be produced here. But it's not actually so much about that. Um, it's about um, having something that you grew yourself that's fresh, that you can harvest, go out and cut, bring in, give it a little rinsing if necessary, and um, ready for the table. And you can eat it five minutes, two minutes after cutting. And that's something very, very special about that. The taste is so much better. The nutritious value is so much better. Um, and the satisfaction, the sense of achievement, and the sense of learning how things grow and how we can interact with the earth and with nature, with climate, with the weather. Gardeners are always listening. I never miss the, the, the weather forecast because the weather means so much to us. So frosty nights alerts us to something. And Dry weather alerts us to having to water. Bright days means plants need watering a little bit more than if they were dull days. It's not a rule that you water so much every day. It all depends on the weather. It all varies. So it's a great thing. Now it would be a heavy box now I'd say. Not too bad. And again, cats would love that. Uh, my dog George would love it too, though they won't like it as much when it gets a good wetting. If it's dry now, they'd love it more. So if it's the wetter it is, you, know, you don't want to wet it just to keep. You don't want it too wet just to keep the, the cat out of it. But nonetheless, a good wetting will keep them off it straight away anyway. But um, a little bit of chicken wire or twines or anything you have, an old bit of a net curtain or anything, something like that, that would still let the light in but um, provide some form of protection for your seed bed for the moment. Garden with one, two, three, four, actually five crops, five different crops in that. And it will be very interesting because actually in a couple of days, the radishes will be the first to germinate. The, sa the spring salads mix will start very quickly as well. So, and the onion shallots will start shooting. So. Within a week, that's what this would be greening up. This would be greening up, and so it'd be a little thing that you could watch and observe and enjoy seeing that bit of soil, bit of earth, and some seeds, and you have a garden. Another thing that we all have plenty of is the milk. This is all charters there. That's perfect for a little, a little mini garden too. The area for probably getting something. Stab a, hole, a few holes in the bottom of it just to make sure you have some uh, drainage. I'm going to put a few keys into this one. Have it for some few little mini greens. Amazing what you can, the amount of things you can have grown. And it adds a great interest because you'll be surprised how quickly, in a few days, the greens will start appearing. I hope you um, enjoyed that experience as much as I did. I really enjoyed doing that. Thank you.